All right, so uh, here we have the aforementioned Mustang. We got a little mini tour of it uh, before your guys' tour uh, that you're seeing now. Just the attention to detail is unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, let's start with the rims. Okay, the rims are designed after Jimmy Clark's 1966 IndyCar, the, the uh, Lotus Ford. I flew out to Indianapolis to the IndyCar Museum. They had the car there, so took a bunch of close-up pictures, and Evide Industries uh, made the wheels for me. Uh, pretty neat, too, that from the mounting pad where it mounts on the surface out to the outer hoop, it's actually one piece of billet completely wow. carved wow. with an inner hoop welded to it. Then it's uh, textured, like walnut shelled, media blasted. Then it's black anodized. Then it's put back on the CNC machine, and this is all turned. So all of this was textured All the and aluminum black. rim, yeah. It was all like this, and then this was machined down. Uh, it's a very elaborate rim, and they're a true five-pin knockoff. So there's five pins that sit into five perfectly machined holes in the backside of this rim. Right. And then the knockoff is true right and left, and it's a true pin drive Six, knockoff. 16, 17? 17s. 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 I tried very hard for the car to look like it still had 15s on it. I didn't want big. Oh, well, I said 16, yeah. so yep. it does look small. <laughs> yeah. Love the uh, side exhaust. Yep. Everything's flat oval. Uh, exhaust made by Aaron Cranford. Wow. 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 Let me see if we can get around to the right now, side. Now, if, if you look in also to that suspension, that's Kyle Tucker's news. So it's, this is the wow. upper part of the cradle. Wow. You, you see this, those star gears? Wow. You can loosen these two nuts and you can literally have your street alignment and mm -hmm. your race alignment, get to the track, loosen those bolts, slide it to the next star, lock wow. it down. No the, guesswork. Uh, the welding on oh. these stacks, the stacks are so, uh, there's nothing better than a beautiful aluminum weld and wow, are those stacks nicely made. I love your, uh, your ram air, your sort yeah. of your cold air intake. I wanted really it to look just, 60s, I didn't yeah. want it high tech and strange but i mean the truth is is when you run the car and the hood is closed you've got to oh, get yeah. the cold air yeah, right it comes in here. right in through the front and blows yeah. right across them just uh what kind of injection are uh you we use uh holly's new uh box that runs everything uh -huh. um, so it, it's a you know laptop setup right EFI. and yes. i try real hard you know we we made sure this was coated the same as the valve sure. so it kind of falls in when i made yeah, this line rails. I brought it underneath the throttle arm, so nothing really stands out. You Thank know? you for not using blue silicone. That doesn't happen. <laughs> not, that not with drives me. me. No, I see no. it on vintage race cars. It's well, like, yeah. get it in black if for, you want to run silicone. I I want everything to look right from I, the day. This is, abs this is one of the most exotic motors I've uh, certainly ever seen an American car Just the, uh, or the any car. Just incredible throttle linkage. The way yeah. It, yeah. it almost looks like it's a mini sway bar with end links coming yep. off of the That's the, the Indy car stuff. Though. We made all the bracketry to mount all the cable. Yeah. And it's we had to slow it down at the throttle pedal inside. So we worked with the lengths of the arms because that's idle and that's wide open. That's it. That's wow, it. That's it. So we, <laughs> and a crank fired ignition. It looks like. Yeah, the crank trigger. We converted it. Yeah, there's no there's no belts of any kind no, running not. off the front of this car. No, there's not. Unbelievable. Because again, it's an Indy car motor. Right. Somehow it sits in this car. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this imaging you're getting on the interior, this white against the blue, the underneath of the car is just like this. The whole underneath of the car is white. Yeah. And the whole suspension's in the blue. And even the stitching down the center of the old school style racing buckets has the martini livery or livery, depending on what side of the pond you're on, <laughs> running running down it. And interior is very spartan and sparse, like even just like the dash is now so minimalistic, a, but so so functional. What we did was there were two metal braces that are welded to this dash that hold the factory dash pad. The factory dash pad is a solid that big piece right. of foam and aluminum. So I removed the one over across. there. This one I removed, but put studs, so it bolts in and just we just quickie leather wrapped it. So this is actually the metal brace that used to hold up the dash pad, and then we masked it off and had my painter. Uh, 
shoot the semi-flat black here, you know, just because race-wise, you wouldn't have white up there, it'd blind you. Right. But, and then... Matt, and the, the door releases... Yep. And yeah. this is actually the prototypo wheel. Uh, there's, again, I tried to do a lot of Porsche. Uh, this is the same wheel, basically, that was on the 904, 906. Right. Yep. And for weight savings, of course, the window straps. Oh, no, yeah. No yep. cranks. No, no cranks. Motors. No regulators built inside. Uh, modified the factory pedals, cut it to take the AC uh, Cobra pedals, and then that's a 427 Cobra throttle pedal that's been changed how it mounts because they used to mount vertical. It's now onto the firewall. Mm. But a lot of Ford stuff mixed in too. And the back end, even though it looks uh, factory, it's the, the centerpiece, the Shelby rear seat delete has been narrowed. Mm -hmm. And these side covers have all been widened because there's tubs. Right. Uh, widened tubs from right. Detroit Speed. So every single one of these pieces have been cut, modified, retextured, re-dyed. Just tons and tons of work. Uh, and, will will wood brakes yep. tucked in? And the How, rear, what's it, about a 10 inch, 11 inch? Yeah, rim it's a in the 10 rim? inch uh, rim, making the rim total 11. The tires uh, around the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, a, they're a DOT legal because it's got the two rain grooves. <laughs> I in saw it. those when you pulled up. <laughs> yeah, just, the, the just one groove, just radius edge slip, to make it legal. Which looks perfect on the car. Yeah, it looks great on the car. And, and you're hiding a dry sump oil tank for the engine? That's actually right here. The dry uh, sump is under the hood. Yeah. Well, I didn't even notice. It wait a minute. Wait a minute. Around. It's we tucked. <laughs> it, I saw it up in we there. We tucked it where the battery relief was. But you said that's a ten quart. You had a dry sump dipstick in the yeah, it's trunk, in the trunk of the car. You got to put it somewhere. You can't. It, it doesn't fit in the motor like on a. But normal how motor. do you get that dipstick? Oh, yeah. Goes in here in the fill. Oh, oh, it that it just dipsticks down in. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just that, a holding that's plate. The, that's right, just a that, holding plate. Yeah, that's okay, a holding right, sheath right, for it. Right. Right. Like, that's the uh, sheath for it. <laughs> right. So okay, now woo, yeah, he's now following sense. the bouncing ball. He's got well, right. those <laughs> dipsticks. To be fair to me, well, they're in the tank right. where you're yeah. supposed to you be. You can't do that so with this. You take the dipstick out of the trunk. You bring it to the engine compartment. My mind was just blown momentarily because. I was I, like, it's the longest dipstick you've ever I, seen. When you see the dipstick back here, and I, so, and also, in every one of my race cars, the dry sump hoppers in the back of the car just to get the weight right, to right. the back of the car. So I'm looking at this going, oh, I guess he's got the Some hopper. tank hidden in there. No. It's hidden in there, and yeah. now he says it's up there, and I go, that thing winds all the way through the car. <laughs> Cools the oil. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, so yeah, that's a sheath. That's a good, a good uh, the, uh, answer for the, it. The filling, <laughs> okay. The uh, the uh, the Le Mans style or the yeah, quick Shelby R. It's a Shelby, Shelby R. R style. I, I love this this look. I I love the crinkle paint or whatever you Rhino liner yep. paint with yeah, the it white is. over the top. Just I I always love that part of race cars. And especially. I did this on purpose instead of perfectly smoothing everything and right, gloss right. paint because it ruined the look. It absolutely it wouldn't look like a race car anymore. Yeah. The uh, the car skinned in some aluminum, some fiber, uh, some aluminum. The, well, this is the whole nose is glass, bumpers glass. This piece Instead of doing a glass piece, we thought it'd be fun to punch flare the frame and then do an aluminum The skin. trunk, trunk right. deck lid. And there's a yeah. lot of work into this now. Oh, like, there's a lot. Punches, every time you do that, mm -hmm. it skews the metal. You got to do it right. And, yeah. and your choice of using fiberglass, again, is to keep it period keep correct. It period. So you're not using Kevlar or carbon fiber because no. it wasn't around then. Right. So Even Euro spec taillights. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Just unbelievable. And unfortunately, we're, we're kind of crammed in, but there's mesh screens down here in the roll pan that is a, a reverse that's light? our backup light and all the uh fuel lines steve was are telling us off inside there the car. are inside the car they're so actually nothing, through nothing the runs rocker. under the car through the rock yeah yeah so they have to nothing hangs underneath the car nothing, nothing hangs and with underneath. your oval exhaust wow. it's really kind of flat down there yeah it almost looks better from underneath steve. <laughs> I can't. well that's what i was saying it's, it's gorgeous un underneath. unbelievable now that you said that Jeff is sweating because he has to get underneath the car that's really low to the ground. <laughs> yes. But the side exhaust. This is, is it. Be... And the cool thing on this tranny is that's the whole throw. Wow. And we made all the little bellows and their safety wire tied. And... Wow, wow. wow. I, again, I love the asymmetrical gauges like in the middle of the dash. You have your, your big tack like right in the middle. Alrighty. We'll give it a yeah, go. Fire it up.
Yeah, and you know the great thing too is, you know, when this guy's down at Cars and Coffee <laughs> and some guy comes up and he goes, Hey, I got a fastback sixty six yeah, uh with two eighty nine or you got the Windsor <laughs> yes, in there exactly. and he pops the hood on this thing, it's gonna be a lot of yeah. spilt coffee. It, yeah. it, oh yeah. It, We're it gonna take it sounds, there too. It definitely sounds like a lot larger engine. Sounds like a huge motor. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, it, and it revs beautifully. So I was just thinking that that was about four grand. So it goes to nine. Wow. So you can imagine what this thing sounds at full chat. It's like, what? When we yeah. had the dyno, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, once again, tell people where to go if they want to check out your website. Oh, purevisiondesign.com. That is it. Steve Strope, unbelievable. You've managed out, do yourself. And again, uh, we keep trying. The pressure's on you now, baby, because yeah, yeah, you got to, you got it, you got to do it again. We got some more up our sleeves. <laughs> so, until next time, this is Adam Carolla from Matt D'Andrea and Steve Strope saying, "Keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel." <laughs> <laughs>